Hey, I'm Grump, I'm not so Grump, and we're the Game Grumps. Welcome back to Psychology Grumps. <laughs> yeah. I'm your host, Dr. Arid. Yeah. Today I have my patient with me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Well, that's fine. No, that's good. That's just our... Uh... David Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I just jumped the gun on it. I don't That's know. That's really funny. Can maybe you, can can you leaf jump back. all the way over there? Maybe I can. Maybe, maybe it'll go back the way it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. The, the magical wow. game design elves. Those plants regenerate fast. <laughs> it's, it's like jungle juice in here. Oh, it's just fucking. Uh, okay. Come on. Not too shabby. Um. All right. So yeah, we get a lot of letters uh, from people who talk about the fact that they deal with depression and Game Grumps uh, helps them and that is fucking awesome. Um, so, like... I mean, it's not awesome that you have depression. No, no. It's awesome that we can help. <laughs> yes, yes. And like, um, so I guess I'll share my story, which I've never really told before in, in a any kind of like public forum. Um, when I was 18, uh, I got really sick um, with mono, and I was just laid up, uh, for like eight months. I couldn't like really get out of bed and shit, and it was really, really awful. And I just, it was the first, I had like a really happy childhood, um, and, uh, I, like, it was my first experience of like real, like, sadness, mm -hmm. like, over a long period of time, and I guess it was, I guess it was depression. But then I noticed, like, even when I got physically healthier, I was still like really struggling like mentally with a lot of stuff because I had gone away to college and like suddenly like I don't know I, th I think that's a tough age just because like you know who you are when you're a kid um, but you you're not a kid anymore yeah. and you don't know how to be an adult yet you don't know where you fit into the world yeah yet. and then you have these constant anxiety attacks about how like your kid life is over. Yeah, and what all does this, that mean? All the stuff that you you love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But keep in mind, let me just say that like it gets way fucking better because like the more of an adult you become, you're like, oh, I can actually like really get into this, and it's super fun and yeah. not that different from being a kid. Um, if you happen to do stuff you love and laugh a lot and all that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so yeah, I started noticing that like I was just like really sad all the time and really like having a lot of trouble um, just getting out of bed in the morning and like things were things were bothering me and basically the short version of the story is I had obsessive compulsive disorder and it was undiagnosed and I didn't really know what it was. Um, like always or just then? See that's the weird thing because OCD is n not... it's hard to separate from like your normal life it's more just like a, an exaggerated form of what everybody has like um how can i describe it like if uh something shitty happened to you and it bothered you like it, it would bother anybody but like a quote-unquote normal person would get over it in like 20 minutes or whatever right but some like for you, it would bother you for weeks or whatever, like. Oh, okay. So that that's the best way I can describe. Um, it, it's just an exacerbated form of like your natural personality. So m OCD kind of like feeds on your imagination. So it's different for everybody. Um, but for me, like, uh, it was that everything in my mind would not stop connecting. Um, like I had too many associations constantly happening in my mind. And as a result, like, I couldn't do anything. So, like, okay, here's an example. Let's say I wanted to go uh, bike riding right mm -hmm. now. My, like, when I was struggling with it, uh, my mind would be racing constantly. And it would be like, I'd have an image of my head ride, riding a bike. And then I'd think of me riding a bike when I was a kid back home. Then I'd start thinking of home. And then I'd start thinking, well, my girlfriend's in my, my, my ex-girlfriend is in my hometown. I don't like my ex-girlfriend, therefore I can't go bike riding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Like, my mind would associate everything until it would get to something that made me sad, and then I couldn't disconnect the sad thing from what I wanted to do. And as a result, I just couldn't do anything. 
So like, interesting. It, it sucked, I, I dude. Kind of have that, I, I guess. A lot of people do. I a never lot really thought do. about that. It's awful. So like, I um, mm. there was a period I almost failed out of school because of it because I couldn't go to my classes. Like, I didn't really leave like my apartment for maybe like five months, something like that. And I'll 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 never forget, dude. Like it, it was it was the weirdest thing. Like, um, I was at my friend uh, Adam's house. And uh, I was sitting on the computer, and I, I said something, and he was like, dude, just stop obsessing about that shit. And it was just one of those weird, like, unconscious, like, things. And I just randomly typed in obsession into, like, Google search terms or whatever. And all these pages on obsessive compulsive disorder came up. And, like, I started reading about it, and I just, like, fucking immediately started crying. Because, like, just... I was like, oh my god, I'm not fucking crazy. Like, I just have this thing. And then I went to the school... Uh, that's, that's an interesting, like, response to that, too. Is that, like, a lot of people would hear that and be like, I am crazy because I have this? Oh, no, 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 no. It, like, for, for me, the moment I found out what it was, as soon as it had a name, I had a focal point from which to attack it from. And then I was like, if... If it's a disease, quote unquote, then it has a cure, you know? Mm -hmm. But when it was just like this nameless thing, like hanging over my life, it was just really, really tough. That's why I tell people, like, don't be scared to like go to therapy and like don't think of it as like a sign of weakness to like ask for help if you're feeling sad. Cause yeah. like there's people out there who are like who want to help you and are qualified to help you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, is they're qualified to help you. Yeah. They, they know what they're doing when it comes to, like, your fucking head. Yeah, yeah, and... Like, I, your friend is gonna listen to you, but he's not necessarily gonna give you, like, A, advice, or B, good advice. Yeah, no question. And so, like, they put me on, I think it was Prozac, uh, for... Like, I was supposed to be on it for an indefinite period of time, and one of the, one of the misconceptions about those types of drugs is that they're happy pills? They're definitely not. They they like <laughs> they you don't they they don't make you happy. They just they even things out like in your mind so you can think clearly and solve your own problems. You know, like you have to take the initiative and be like, "No, I'm not going to fucking live like this." Right, right. Um It's this it's the same thing with like my ADD medicine. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't I don't I don't need it to function, but it really does like I I always feel like I can take it for a little bit, and then I get in these good habits, and then when I'm off it, then I can I can carry that through. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's 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 amazing because I I think back to those those times, which now seem so distant. You know, they were like over a decade ago. Yeah. Um, and like, I'm just so happy now, like all the fucking time, because like I know what it's like to be sad. You know, and like, it gives you. Like, you have, there's the two different kinds of happiness, you know? There's the kid happiness, where you're just like, I'm happy because everything's awesome and, yeah. and new and interesting. I'm having a great time. Yeah. And, and then there's the other happy, like, the light at the end of the tunnel happiness, where you're like, I had to go through some shit, and like, I earned this, you know? Yeah, the mellow happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the at peace kind of feeling. The, like, half-opened eyes relaxed on the couch. <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. So, so that's, um, that's the very, uh, truncated version of my story, but, like, basically after, oh, yeah, so, like, that's when I went to France, like, as an exchange student, um, and that really helped me, too, like, going to, a, like, a totally new place and, like, seeing, like, different environments and just being like, hey, you know what, like, the world isn't what I thought it was, there's, yeah. like, a lot more to it that I haven't seen. Oh, that looks friendly. <laughs> and so like and I had this big like maybe this is like dramatic overly dramatic to say but it is what happened like there was like this really pretty lake uh, in the middle of the town I was staying in and um, I was on Prozac for I guess like six months and then like while I was out there I was like I don't fucking need this shit anymore like this shit is I, I just feel good and I don't I'm done and uh so I like took did, the, did you throw it? I did. Nice. I took the pill bottle and fucking threw it into the lake. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, it was like one of the one of the most satisfying like personal moments, I guess. That's super cool. And I've never told anybody that before. I, I would love to have a story like that. 
My life is so not that. <laughs> Every, everybody has everybody has their things, man. Their catharsis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, In one way or another. Yeah. But, uh... I promise we'll get back to talking about, like, dicks and stuff soon. <laughs> but, but I just wanted to share that, because, like, so many people have, like, opened up to me since I joined the show. And, uh... Return the favor? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I, it, I mean, return the favor and also it, like, made me more comfortable doing it myself, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, um... There was a long time where I was very uncomfortable letting myself out there in the world. Right. Because of, like, you know, it's particularly, like, specific communities that I was a part of were, like, very harsh on people. Right. About, like, being themselves. Oh, you like, mean, like, fucking YouTube? Having opinions and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was like it was like particularly the Newgrounds. Like I met a lot of my really good friends from Newgrounds. Right. Um, and there was a really like tight, cool community, but there was also a lot of like extreme douchebags. Like not like the YouTube stuff is like, when you read YouTube comments, it's just like stupidity. Right. But when you when you read Newgrounds comments, it's like these people will like follow your work just to like wreck you. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, uh, so. That's what I, like, had to deal with for a long time. Oh, dude, that's fucking jealousy and insecurity. Yeah. If, if you're secure in yourself, like, there's no reason to fucking dedicate your life to being an asshole. <laughs> so, it, yeah, I mean, I'm sure among other things, but certainly that. Um, and so, like, yeah, that, that took me a long time to kind of... And it was really hard to be, like, a comedian, too, because I couldn't be honest about myself. Right. Um, if I was trying to, like, be this thing that wouldn't get made fun of all the time. Exactly. You have to be, you you have to just like, be at peace with what you are and what you really want to be. Like, um, like a lot of people will say like, I'm an aspiring artist or I'm an aspiring like writer. Like, no, like you're, you're a writer. Yeah, I you, hate that. You're, I, you're I not. Always say that. Like if, if, if you're doing that shit every day, like that's what you are. Like there's no, um, uh, just own it. And, do, and, the, there's this really cool book called uh, The Artist's Way that uh, I really like and it's uh, it talks about that a lot and it's like um, Don't be shy about calling yourself an artist be fucking proud of that shit because yeah. that's what you are and You're not you're not anything until you can proudly declare that you are that you know. Yeah, definitely So yeah, and do it every day that's the other thing. That's something that Jesse Shell says in his book, Art of Game Design. I don't... He says, oh. if, you, if you want to be a game designer, you just have to say it to yourself. Yep. That I am a game designer. Don't be scared. Yeah. Like, you have something to offer that no one else can bring. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I, I still value humility, like, quite a lot. But... Oh, yeah. There's, there's a level where it's too far. I think it's... And it I, holds you back. I think it's the difference between, like, proudly announcing it to yourself and like running around and being like, oh, yeah. suck my dick, I'm yeah. an artist. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. D yeah, don't get me wrong. Don't <laughs> be an asshole. <laughs> That's really the gist of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what was it? Uh, oh man, there was a quote that I was like, uh, I was thinking about. Oh, oh, oh. It was something that somebody posted recently that was like something to the effect of uh, be. Be nice to the people on the way up because you'll need them on the way down. Oh yeah. And it was like, I was like, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. It's it's more just like, just don't be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> just don't don't. Just because be... there's still like a selfishness to that phrase. Yeah yeah. Where it's like you're gonna you you. Be nice yeah, so you can so use these people exactly. later. Exactly. <laughs> yeah yeah. No I, I, I I don't think the spirit of it. Is like that, but I I think it does. There is a way you could look at it. Where, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. Plus, it's also like really pessimistic. Yeah. Like y you'll never stay. Yeah, you, you don't up. have to come down. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to fucking crash and burn. <laughs> that's not a necessary part of like artistic endeavors. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, that, that's the thing that always bugged me too. Is like you hit your high point and then you know it gets low, and it's like, well, I don't know. Yeah. It's always a journey. Yeah, I mean, like to find high point. Yeah. Like, maybe the next thing you do won't sell as well, but, like, you can still fucking like it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and like to do it. Yeah. And be a part of it. I think I went backwards. Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Wow, well, I hope uh, everyone enjoyed this incredibly, like, <laughs> fucking open, clear-the-air Game Grumps episode. Philosophical Grumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I, I don't know. I promise there won't be another one because that's my only story like that. What's your favorite quote? In general? Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever happens, happens. Really? Yeah, no joke. Well, two, there are two. That's Spike from Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> whatever happens, happens. Really? It's, it's such a fucking good, uh, term. Like, I just, I love it. Wow, there's three. Okay, there's three. <laughs> Um, there's, a uh, Aeneas Nin, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but, uh, it's, uh, we don't see things as they are, we see them as we are, which I think is very fucking cool. Mm. And there's one, um, there's a famous one from, uh, a gravestone that, I'm not gonna get it exactly right, but it's, um, it's, it's, uh, oh, fuck, it's like, as you are, so once was I. But as I am, so shall you be. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yes! Yes! Ah, so badass. My, uh, one of my favorites, maybe not my absolute favorite, but, like, the one that I always think back to whenever I'm doing something right. uh, that I need to, like, accomplish, is that, like, it, it's coupled with, like, a story. So it's a Bruce Lee quote, and he was, uh... He was he was running with like a partner of his, and then his partner was like, oh, I'm, I'm like I'm tired, I gotta rest, and he was like, No resting, don't rest, and he was like, oh, ugh, Come on, man, I gotta rest, and he was like, and uh, it, they just got into a fight about it, and eventually he was like, Well then, why don't you just die then? <laughs> oh my God. And it made him so angry that he went for like another three miles. Bruce Lee? Yeah. No, no, it made the other guy so oh, angry. Bruce oh. Lee's the one who said it. Oh, that's fucking awesome. So, it's just like, oh man, like, you might as well be dead if you can't, if you can't, like, give it your all. Oh, you know? it's awesome! Yeah. So. And that Bruce Lee, he was one tasty motherfucker. Yeah. Look Salty. at this! Holy shit, speaking of tasty. We'll find out what this is next time on Game Girls. Goddamn right. Later, everybody. <laughs>